so my friend you you were saying that you were kind of an atheist is that what you said earlier if i have uh, not before 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 yes. you were you were kind agnostic of agnostic or atheist you know what agnostic i mean agnostic or atheist okay okay and our brother said is was always a muslim or he was, yeah, was he also had a, you were born in a muslim family right yeah yeah okay so you both are sunni sayyids uh, sunni yeah, muslims yeah. Yeah, sunni. Yeah. all right that's that's good that's good that's good so so basically you are saying that you had a journey that you finally accepted islam mm -hmm. to be your religion right yeah and you said that because the guidance is in quran right um pretty much yeah okay okay that that sounds good that sounds good. so but when we look at quran there are so mm -hmm. many passages which says that allah misguides that allah misguides mm -hmm. well uh so let me just say this, neither I nor Said are scholars of Islam, we don't know everything about it, so I can't tell an ayah exactly what it says, you know what I mean, but that Allah misguides, uh, if there is a passage, sure, sure. So that's what I'm saying, like you said Allah guides, but uh, Allah says that he guides whom he wills, and he misguides whom he wills, I so... So how can like me? Let me share my screen now because that is yeah. why we are actually here. Yeah. Uh, this is the screen you can see now. Yeah, yeah, I see. So you said, but here, Allah is sending astray. He is not just misguiding; He is using. The Arabic is yohviyakun, which simply comes from yohvi. Yohvi means al khavi or yohvi which simply means sending a stray. Uh, okay. So, Allah is supposed to be Rahman and Rahim, correct? Because that's what Bismillah means. Bismillah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Yeah, right? merciful and most merciful. Something right. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, based on that, uh, if we look at this, this creates a huge problem in itself because right now, Allah is sending a stray. Why would he send a stray? Because he is the most wise and he knows what is best. He knows who what people deserve Jannah and what people don't deserve Jannah. That's my assumption. Okay. I will go with your assumption. Obviously, no, none of us are scholars, right? So yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I will I will go with your assumption. But that makes Allah not good. Because let me explain why I said not good. Because if Allah is sending me astray, then it means it is He who's making me do the bad things because he's sending me astray from the right path. That's what okay. Alhamdulillah is. Okay. Uh, when we read the first ayah, uh, first surah of Quran, which is Surah Fatiha, we ask for Allah, we pray, Allah do not allow us to go astray, but rather leave it, lead us to the straight path. So if we, so basically Allah is making me go into the bad part the wrong path because he's leading me astray so okay. that makes allah not a good god but uh this is actually this is um uh, sorry just one second this actually goes back to your religion as well christianity am i right no it does not why isn't every person on the world on the, on the, on the planet a christian why doesn't your god make everybody a christian why because doesn't he guide everybody Okay, because in Christianity, every human has a free will. They can choose what they want to choose. Mm -hmm. God has given the books and his word. Now it's upon human whether he wants to choose the right path or the wrong path. But the problem that I'm showing you over here in Quran, it simply says that Allah is the one who leads astray. Whereas Allah should say that I'm here for the guidance you can choose the right path or the wrong path. It's up to you. It's not well, saying that. He does. Saying, uh, if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. I uh, listened to a lecture the other day, and it was just basically talking about that if he sees, I'm not. Maybe this is not correct. I won't say it is correct, but he, if he sees somebody that is doing something that is a big sin, mm -hmm. like uh, for example, I don't know, interest rates, zina, stuff like that, he lets mm -hmm. them go. 
he lets them go of the shaitan. But that's not what the verse is saying, buddy. If you look at the verse, it's saying Allah just leads astray. It's his, Allah is not saying that I let you go do whatever you want to do. This is saying Allah leads them astray. In kaan Allah yuridu. Right? An yughviyakum. So it is Allah who's keeping you astray or leading you astray. So however you may like to translate it or whichever translate you want to pick up, I can pick up open any translation that you want to. That's not even a problem. Uh, that's sorry, uh, sorry, just one second. I mean, I'm not in that side. Okay. Right. So, uh, okay, sorry, man. Uh, Saeed, do you have any thoughts about this? Do you have any what, anything to say? No, no. I'm just yeah, um, listening. Yeah. I don't really... I don't really, uh, since I'm not a scholar, I would probably be uh, able to answer this question because I believe and I know for a fact that the Quran is not, there's no mistakes in the Quran. And if I knew, I would love to know to answer this for you. But since simply I do not know, I cannot answer it for you. You are claiming, um, you claimed something and that is why I opened up this. Uh, otherwise, I would not have opened up this but because you claimed it. Uh, that Allah guides, and I just showed you that uh, it's not yeah. always the truth. Sorry, one, one second. Brought, yes. My friend here sent me uh, the site. Is this the translation for that ayah? Mm, such a me on Wait. Which translation do you want me to open? I'll open it. This is Quran.com. I can open the translation that you want me to open. Is this uh, is it the tafsir, the ayah? Ayah? Oh, this is tafsir. Okay. Okay, so okay. Um, let me copy. Can I paste it here into this uh, thing? Oh, here. Yeah, paste the tafsir. Let me know which tafsir to open. I'll open that. No, no. Tell me which tafsir to open, and I'll open it. I don't know. It. I don't know. Ask him. Do you want me to open yeah, Jalalain? Do you want me to open Ibn Kathir? Wait. Which tafsir do you want me to open? I'll open that. Uh, he just sent me something. Can you, Said? Uh, from now on, send these messages here to the. Okay. To the okay to this. Oh, uh, this? Wait, 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 wait. No, this is thing. Discord channel. Just tell me, guys. Wrong listen, thing, listen. Wrong thing, wrong thing, wrong listen, thing. listen. Hold up, hold up, hold up. let me help you. Let me help you to help me. Tell me which tafsir you want me to open. I'll open that. Ask him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ask him. Said, which tafsir are you just trying find to? It on the internet and I saw it. Okay, forget Islamic studies. Tell me the name of the scholar whose tafsir you want me to open. Uh, I don't know, man. Any, open anyone you want. I don't really care. Okay. Open anyone you want. I have Ibn, I have Ibn Kathir right here. Ibn Kathir, sorry. Okay. Right next to me. So, what's this is Surah Hud, right? Uh huh. What, yes. ayah, what ayah is it in our numbers? Because I'm not really familiar with these. Uh, okay. Wait, wait. There you go. Let's see some tafsirs. Okay. This is the tafsir. Okay. This is Ibn Abbas to begin with. To begin with, it's saying. So let me if I find it in my this year, 613. What, so, uh, what ayah is it? Yeah, 34 ayah. Just wait. You can scre see it on the screen. I am showing it from the authentic websites, uh, not my own website. This is quranx.com. It has all the tafsirs. So we'll go to all of them. How about that? Uh, 34, right? Yeah. OK. OK. So let's read through different of One second. One second. 30, this is 20. Uh, Somebody is watching some video, probably. I don't know who that is. I can't okay. find it. Whatever. I'll trust you on this one. All right. Man, I'm showing you the authentic websites. Okay. It has okay. all the tafsirs. Buddy. Go ahead. So Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, is actually saying, Allah is divide, uh, divine oneness. If Allah wills to keep you astray from guidance, he's your Lord, and he has better right over you than me, and etc. So he's saying the same which the ayah is saying. Jala line. And my counsel will not benefit you like Muhammad's counsel, because that's how the ayah is saying. If I desire to counsel you when God desires to keep you astray, right? And he used the Arabic. 
and my consul will not benefit you. He is your Lord and to him you will be brought back. So once again, we see the same thing. Allah is keeping astray. Ibn Kathir. So Ibn Kathir starts from verse number 32 to 34. So Ibn Kathir starts from the Noha and etc. because the context changes between the two verses. So I'm going to go all the way to ayah number 34 first. And it says over here, In kaan Allah yuridu in yohviyakum. If Allah will is to keep you astray, this means your deception and your ultimate destruction. Obviously, because then you will be destroyed because Allah is keeping you astray. So this is the Ibn Kathir. Yohviyakum, the older one as well. And my advice will not profit you. Muhammad is saying, my advice is not going to profit you even if I wish to give you good counsel. If Allah will is to keep you astray. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. means okay. something that could be useful to you in acceptance of my preaching to you, warning that you are advising you. In kaan Allah yuridu ain yohviyakum. So basically, if Allah wished to keep you astray, even Muhammad's guidance when he was al alive is not going to help you because Allah wants to keep you astray. Okay, so uh, let me add to this. The thing is, um, guidance is only given from Allah. Nobody else can give you guidance. That's what we talk about in Islam. You probably already know that because you're an ex-Muslim. Hmm. So if it is Allah's will to not give you guidance, hmm. he already knows why he did that. And he already knows the future and the past and the present. He knows everything. So it is his will. And I respect that will. If that is the case, what you're trying to say here. So our guidance only comes from Allah. Okay. So now what you are saying is guidance comes from Allah. But here you are not talking about guidance. You see the difference between guiding and leading astray is very, very obvious. Yeah. When leading astray means I ask you, hey, buddy, we are in Washington, D.C. Let's assume you are you, you know uh, America a little bit. So let's assume that we are in Washington, D.C. And I ask you, hey, how do I reach Canada? And you tell me, take the route south. I will never reach Canada. I will reach mm -hmm. Mexico. North of America, course, course. but I will never reach reach Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. When you talk about leading astray, it is not about guidance. Guidance well, is that yeah. I asked you something and you did not answer me. That means you did not guide me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right? let me just add. Sorry, sorry. To add here, it says uh, not to lead astray. It is to keep you astray because he knows he, he knows all. That's the thing. Allah knows all and he's going to keep you astray because you are not worthy of his mercy. Probably you are not worthy of something that is for somebody else. You understand me? So, so he's keeping you astray because you he knows you're not worthy for it. So basically you are telling me Allah does not lead you astray, but he keeps you astray in this ayah. Uh, that's my assumption. OK, so I'll go with you. Which is this is Surah? Hood. Oh. Hmm. Because of the tafsir says that, so that is why you are saying it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just okay. uh, again, we're no scholars here. I'm just assuming this. So, so because you yeah. are trying to use the keeping word rather than this one. So let me open Quran chapter number seven, verse number hundred and seventy-eight. Seven, because there are so many verses on this, not just one. Wamin yuzalil, he lets you go astray now. He is the rightly guided, whoever he sends astray. Now he mm -hmm. is sending you astray. Mm -hmm. It is those who are losers. What should I do over here, buddy? Um, sure. I mean, okay. I'm not here do to, you, uh, do you? I do not know the Quran. I don't okay. know, but I'll just say he knows everything. And if he decides to keep or send or leave somebody astray, I believe that is for the greater good. So it seems like you don't even know uh, the... Islamic theology of Takdir and Qadr. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Can you uh, okay. elaborate? Let me give you Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, 6594. Allah created humans, right? Then when he was in his mother's womb, Allah wrote whether he will be a wretched doer or a blessed doer in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. His soul is breathed. So basically, you might be doing the good deeds of the people of the fire. So you might be doing the bad deeds of the people of fire, means the hell. Till there is any only a cubit arm length, means like 
a few days left to you to die between him and the fire but then the writing then the writing which allah wrote when you were in the mother's womb will come into play and will proceed which allah has ordered the angel to write in the mother's womb precedes and he does the deeds of the people of the paradise so all your life you were a bad doer but in the end you said la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and you will be entered into paradise and same is the reverse is there is a people who are doing the deeds of the paradise and then the writing proceeds and the person does the deed of the people of the fire and he enters this so in the end person will do some bad things and everything which will be far bigger bad things because allah pre wrote whatever he would want to do yeah so because he knows the future he knows no, everything there is a difference between knowing and pre writing for you to do exactly what he wants to so that he sends a stray so that you would do certain things because he pre wrote it two different two entirely different things and that's what so i'm trying to show you um he is after all the almighty that and he so created th- us and if he wills to do whatever he wants i never question that okay so basically when i will die But i cannot give you an answer for this because i'm not yeah. known i'm not really knowledgeable exactly so But when my I... assumption is because i know he's the most merciful the most he's the greatest he's everything what i just said and he does everything in his will and he knows everything and there's no need to think about this stuff because he knows everything okay no it, it for me it has to do everything okay, for you, because for you, okay, for, for, for basically because when i die and i will stand in front of allah and he will say i'm going to put you in hell i'm going to say hey i did all the good things in my life then you led me astray because you said that in quran not just one place you said it in eight different places i can show you other places as well and then you pre-wrote it when i was in my mother's womb what is my fault why did you not write the good things for me was i like i didn't even know myself when you were writing these things why am i to be blamed and if you already pre-wrote for me everything then what is the purpose of heaven and hell because you pre-wrote everything for me what is the purpose for heaven and hell for me so what is oh, sorry what is the purpose of allah's heaven and hell because if he already pre-wrote so if we look at it from this perspective which is a fair perspective to look at it you are talking from faith i am talking like you were once not in a faith were you right so when i look at things i have to look at things from not being in the faith and then i will look at things because i had these problems right Mm-hmm. because quran allah says quran chapter number 32 verse number 13 check check this out as well 32 13 allah said that i am sending you astray and i am doing all this why if he had willed we would have given every soul its guidance but the word from me will come into effect what word that i will surely fill hell with jinn and the people all together why would mm-hmm. allah want to fill well here's the thing here's the thing this is continue i can um Here's the thing we don't we there's things that we don't understand for example we don't understand what space is we don't understand this that and there was one instance you probably know this when Allah created us and the and the malaks the malakin asked him oh oh our lord why are you creating a person why are you creating them they will only spill blood on this earth something like that right yeah. and he said to the malaks malakin i know something that you do not mm-hmm. i know something that you do not that's knowing and Every, so he knows any, why any, he did it. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Let me finish. He knows why he's guiding some and why he's guiding isn't guiding others. Or if if he says that here, I'm not saying that that's true, but if, sure. And he knows why he's keeping some astray, and he knows why he guided some people. Yeah, but he the thing is, wait, 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 wait. Give, give me a sec. Uh, it's not that he he doesn't guide someone. He misguides <clears throat> misguides someone. Okay, it is his fault that I'm not a Muslim because because like. He misguides me to not believe in him. So if he misguides me, he cannot judge me for not being a Muslim because it's his fault. Get it? So he's not. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. You think it's his fault, but maybe he knows that you're not a person for this. Maybe no, I don't think so. The thing knows. is, I I don't think so because he said so in the Quran. Did he misguides me? He leads me astray because by his... he knows something that we don't. Okay, uh, give me a sec, Con. Uh, sure, sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah. the problem is he, i have told you like 10 times already i think you are far more intelligent than me at least for sure uh because i'm i'm not even a muslim so you are far more intelligent and plus you live in united states so my friend 
this English is very very clear very very clear and the Arabic is even clearer right if you can take these verses to anyone and you will say you will see that it is all about sending astray and the Qadr of Allah I've shown you one hadith I can show you four more ahadith five more ahadith where Allah writes in the womb of the mother before you were even born whether you will be wretched doer means the evil doer or a good doer the problem in this kind of a qadr is that what is my fault to be thrown into hell eventually if you do not want to work on this for now we can skip that and we can go to some other point but this is a big big issue okay so let me um so again i wish i knew more i really do wish i knew more but i'm just, I'm just gonna try um see if this is correct so you're trying to ask me that uh you're trying to tell me that allah no matter what you do in this world in this life he will choose to guide you or not or to lead you astray am i correct that's what you're trying to tell me that's so that what is, quran is saying that's what the course, is saying. well my answer to that is simply allah knows best Allah knows best, but that's the, not the problem. The problem is it's my salvation, hell or heaven is on the line. Of so course, do course, I want yeah. to choose a, a God who gives me free will to choose what I want to choose? Or do I want to go to a God, accept a God who wants to throw me in hell because his word is, I want to fill hell with jinn and mankind. And that's why he leads astray. That's a totally different mm -hmm. concept. Sure, sure. I understand mm -hmm. what you're trying to say, but again, my sorry. simple answer mm -hmm. is Allah knows why He guides people and why He has maybe misguided you. I don't, so, I don't even, I don't even need to know that because that's altogether a separate thing. Now you are saying this, assuming we have free will, according to Quran and all the early scholars, we do not have free will. The qadr is pre-written, so you can search ah, on the word. Oh, qadr. qadr is like a yeah, yeah. I know what qadr is. It's like um exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah of um okay okay yeah sure. our hell our heaven our bad deeds are pre-written and allah misguides so that we could actually attain that and we go into hell then what's happening is i am screwed if he already wrote that well, while maybe, i was in the belly uh, okay sure sure so you're trying to say that no matter what you do in this life it's already written for you right exactly because that's what okay, Allah said so for sure but maybe Allah knows I'm just assuming this again but nobody knows this I don't think anybody does but maybe Allah knows that uh sorry maybe Allah knows what kind of a person you are internally and he knows that maybe he made you're it. not worthy maybe you're not worthy of his um salvation when I was in, in the belly time. brother when I was in the belly of my mother yeah but how you know, can he, I be he knows who are you going to be when you grow up? Wait, wait. <clears throat> That's yeah. what I'm saying. He's writing. He's not saying he knows what I'm going to grow up to be. Because he's he is, a, he is writing. He is writing my color right there and then whether I will be an evil doer or a bad doer. Now, Allah is mighty. If he writes, I'm an evil doer, I will be an evil doer. If he writes, I'm a good doer, I will be a good doer because he is God. So now what I'm saying is why he would do that to a person who's just a baby in the mother's womb he would pre-write for me whether i will be evil doer or a bad doer that's something I understand. I understand. that's well, something wait, wait, wait. which is wrong uh, is sorry, Nathan, sorry, Nathan. i cannot answer that question because okay i am not allowed. fair enough let me let me go somewhere else okay so did here, Nathan want to say something sorry yeah i wanted to ask a question do you sure, think that the, do you think the just god um would send a baby to hell uh well i don't think he's look i mean from my uh assumption no. i don't think he's looking at that baby as a baby he's looking no, no, at listen it, the baby never did anything baby. the baby that never did anything wrong he dies mm -hmm. okay at the young mm -hmm. age do you think that just god should send this baby to hell uh no. he is he is baby again the all-knowing he is again the all-knowing but when a baby dies before like uh i'm sorry like maybe uh, when it becomes uh mature it goes to jannah but that's not that's not related to no, no 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 listen but the baby say, just, never, a second, just a second never, just okay. just a second here, just okay. a second sorry yeah, just a sure, second sure. go ahead go ahead all right now that you brought up this this is sahih muslim once again kitabul qadr 
the book of destiny okay kitabul qadr we were talking about this okay. you said babal maniyal kul maulud means the one child is born in a state of fitra and the ruling of a dead children okay you said child will go into heaven directly sahih al muslim aisha disagree with you aisha the mother of believers said allah messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of ansar and aisha said allah messenger there is happiness for this child who is the bird of the bird of paradise for it committed no sin nor has he reached the age when one can commit sin he the messenger said aisha par adventure it may be otherwise because god created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were yet in their father's lines and created for hell those are who go to hell he created them for hell while they were yet in the father's line you disagreed with aisha and muhammad directly right now by stating oh, okay. that okay okay sure sure my my uh that was my assumption of course and my okay. uh my mistake so that actually just says uh what i was just saying before it was it's allah is sure all knowing and he knows who deserves what in this so basically this. basically when you will have a child you do not know god forbid god forbid god forbid if he passes away as a baby you don't know whether he will go to heaven or hell just because that's what allah wrote for him allah knows everything we yeah know, wait, we wait, wait, we're not I, talking about knowing allah wait a sec. Your, your friend said that the just god wouldn't send a baby to hell there would be unjust god so i want to ask said bro um so you see so you mm. see this um that allah can send a baby to hell do you still think that islam is the right religion after seeing this hmm, i need to research this okay okay all right so now i was giving to this in quran chapter number 15 verse number 39 it says qala rabbi bima aghwayani he said my lord because thou has sent me astray same word right same word yughwi aghwi you mislead me he mislead me yughhwi aghwi nothing else this word is same i verily shall adorn the path of error of was wala oghwi annahum now i will mislead them who is saying that do you know who is saying that probably god no he is iblis who is saying that the mm -hmm. satan satan is saying to mm -hmm. allah that because you sent me astray now i am going to lead everyone astray in your earth mm -hmm. okay this yeah, yeah. is what this is what it is saying so now what is happening oh sahih international even says iblis sorry i don't have have to go further even sahih international has a bracket which says iblis because kala rabbi somebody is talking to god kala rabbi oh lord so basically leading astray is the purpose of a satan according to quran itself as well leading astray is the purpose of a satan not of a god yet allah himself is leading astray in 1134 that is interesting that is interesting that is interesting right let me show yes, you sir. another one maybe it will going to help you even further we will go to quran chapter number 38 verse number 82 iblis said once again iblis is saying that by your might whose might allah allah's yes. might Mm. i will surely mislead them all so now even satan is saying i'm going to use your power okay and i'm going to mislead everyone what is the mm. difference between the satan's misleading and allah's misleading do you know that uh well i'm just going to assume here that because allah is the almighty so his leading and, astray would be more than the satan's misleading right uh to, to answer that i'm not i'm not knowledgeable don't, enough don't worry I, quran is sufficient for your answers buddy the next verse says except among them that you chose so basically whomever allah chose so allah is more powerful than satan when it comes to leading astray same is the case when we see in 1134 1134 that i showed you to begin with which actually says my advice whose advice muhammad's advice even muhammad's advice will not benefit you people because allah wish to keep you in error or allah wish intended to because allah intended you to put in error or astray because the word in arabic is the same it's yuhwiyakum so we have established one basic principle 
that when you say Allah guides, He guides only some people. Those, because those for some wishes, people, those who He wishes, of course. Those who He wishes, right? So basically, mm -hmm. it does not make any difference. And but then, He pre-writes everything, and hence He will going to create misleading mislead the people so that whatever he wrote in the womb of a mother for that particular baby he will going to do that okay now if we talk about <clears throat> fitna fitna uh, can you uh, please just um, tell me what fitna is i'm not really can't remember it okay fitna let me open the verse 25 20 Okay. Allah is saying, uh, let's read Sahih International. And we did not send before you any messenger except that they ate food, walked, and we have made some of you as trial for others. You have practiced, and your Lord is all saying trial. He used the word trial. Fitna, okay. Fitna is mischief kind of a thing. Okay, fasad, uh -huh. fitna is the ah, same. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, right? fitna, fasad, fasad like, fitna. like um, how do you say, it? like uh, like uh, something like similar to rule riots, like something. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know, fitna. So Allah is creating fitna, right? We see that over here, right? If we look at Quran chapter number twenty-two, verse number fifty-three, and you can read any tafsir when you are free and you want to do that, it says. So may make what Satan throws a fitna, a fitna for those within those hearts is desired for those and indeed wrongdoers are in extreme risk. So basically, once again, we see Allah is creating fitna. Satan is creating fitna. Mm -hmm. So he's creating fitna for those uh, whose heart is in disease, right? Okay, so yeah. who created... is, is, is he, sorry, sorry, is he saying that right here? He's creating fitna for those whose heart is in disease. Mm -hmm. Is that what he's saying? So yeah. maybe when Allah, I mean, since he, he is the all knowing, and when Allah says something, he means it all. You know what I mean? It's oh, this is Satan. Are... brother. This is Satan who's doing the fitna in the heart. Oh, that is when so Allah was, yeah, yeah, Satan. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, okay. Sorry. When Allah was that. doing that, when Allah was doing that. He was talking to prophets. Okay, some of the prophets. So, my, my friend, Satan always have less power than Allah when it comes to fitna, when it comes to leading astray, when it comes to be mutakabbir, when it comes to be everything. And I will show you, I will go on with you for as many times, as long as you want to, because these are a huge problem, were a huge problem, when I was a Muslim. So I, I will go with you for hours on this. That's not even a problem. Okay, okay. Uh, well, um, Adam, I'll call you Adam because I don't know your name. Yeah, I would, Adam. Yeah, I would love if I would, could answer these things, but uh, I'm not a scholar, you know what I mean? And uh, to be honest, um, I, be, I still believe 100% in all this, you know what I mean? Because I believe that Allah chooses his paths for people. And if, sure, when we're in the womb, if he makes the, everything for us, I believe that. He knows everything. He is the all-knowing. He is the all-seeing. And that doesn't change anything for me. How do you know that, buddy? That's what the thing is. How do you know that Allah is all-knowing? Because let me give you another thing for that. Because you just said that. Hey, uh, so Adam, I, you, I will I'm give you. Can you stop for one second? Let me just see if my uh... sure. Please get him. Let me just see if my brother is here because I, I would like to throw him too. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. Said is here. Yeah. Uh, he can't. He can't come. So continue, Adam. Okay. Just give me a sec. Let me. Uh, uh, uh... <clears throat> But you do have to Ahmed. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry. Never be said that more of it. He's not gonna come in. Yeah. He's gonna come next time. So uh I would like okay. to do this again sometime. Uh we're not gonna finish. Let's, yeah, let's look at this one, obviously. Yeah, we can we can do it anytime. So this is 
Chapter number 18, verse number 22. You said Allah knows everything, right? Okay. Right? Okay. So uh, Muhammad was asked by the people, how many people were the people of the cave? Ishabul Kaif. Right. Uh, translation. I don't know Arabic. <laughs> no, no. Forget, forget the translation. I'm actually giving you the context from the tafsir. You can open any tafsir. Okay. For chapter number eighteen, verse number twenty-two, you can open any tafsir. Okay. Allah is talking to some people. Sorry, Muhammad was talking to some people. How many people were in the Ishabul Kaif? And he said, "Okay, wait. Jibrail just came to me, and he gave me this. Okay. <sighs> what did Jibrail gave him? They say three. And their dog was fourth, and the other say five, and their dog was six. Guessing at the unseen, will say seven, and their dog was eight. Say, my lord knows best. The number none knows except the few. Now the problem is that this verse came down because Muhammad was asked by the people. Let me go to Tafsir now, eighteen twenty-two Quran. Eighteen. Muhammad was asked about it. Muhammad was asked about it, right? By the Jews at that time, that Najranis rather, he was asked, how many were there in the Ashabul Kaif, right? Let me go to your favorite one. You like uh, Ibn Kathir because you said that earlier. Their number. Allah tells us that people dispute about the number, okay? Now people are disputing about the number. Then what should I say? No, tell them they were seven and their dog was eight. And guessing the unseen. So this ayah clearly shows that there was a huge issue of the unseen rather not seen. Allah not seen. So you can read any tafsir on that and you will see that because people were saying it. And of the mankind, Kutaida said that Ibn Abbas related that I am of you mentioned the ayah there, seven, etc. etc. So we see. Even when you talk about seeing the unseen and Allah is talking to Muhammad directly, yet we see this problem. Hmm. So you're trying to say, um, can you elaborate for me? No, I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just giving you an answer that you gave me a question. Rather, you gave a statement and I just showed you from Quran itself that when it talks about unseen, there are so many verses, not just one, not just one. Uh, there are many. I will give you another one. Quran chapter number three, verse number hundred and sixty-one. Let's go there. Quran chapter number what three. Are you answering exactly? If you could just let me. You know. said uh, you just made a statement that Allah knows everything. You just made a statement. Oh, so you're answering this? Okay, okay. Uh, you just made a statement, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, in in this. Uh, Excuse me. Why is there so many translations open? Easy two translations are more than sufficient. Okay. It is not suitable for any prophet that he could act unfaithfully in regards to a war booty. Whoever betrays will come with what he took on the day of resurrection. Then will every soul be fully compensated for what it earned and they will not be the wrongdoer. So what happened was in the day of uh, Badr, in the day of Badr, um, some uh, war booty, some stuff from the war booty was stolen. Okay. And, uh, and what happened was that people started to accuse Muhammad. Right. And when they started to accuse Muhammad, uh, the verse of Allah came down, which says you should not accuse your prophet, but rather it will be known at the uh, day of resurrection. Now, the problem with this is if people accuse Muhammad and Jibrail just came down to Muhammad, Jibrail should have said, hey, guy XYZ stole it. Allah is all knowing. Tell your people he stole it because they are accusing you. Instead, the verse is saying in the day of resurrection, we will know. So which clearly says that Muhammad had literally no communication with Allah. He was just trying to make 
some statements otherwise Allah is all knowing according to you well, this verse should uh, have said that well maybe Allah knew that it was better for him to keep it for the day of resurrection that doesn't because, matter so doesn't matter person to see his iman. read it Re no come on man come on man be reasonable it's Muhammad we are talking about Muhammad people are accusing him check this out when some velvet cloth was missing on the day of Badr, some people began to say, who are, who are these some people? They are Muslim, obviously, because you already killed or thrown away all the Mukhalifin who came and fought with you. And they said, perhaps the Prophet took it. The following verse was revealed that it is not for the Prophet to be fraudulent, etc., 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 etc. Now, if you are in a judge and jury, if you would be answering like that, you seriously think that somebody will believe it? No, but Muhammad is in power right now. He said, Allah said this, you will find out in the day of resurrection. And the guy who stole it, if it was not Muhammad, he's enjoying that piece of clothes so on, or whatever. And what if really Muhammad stole it? Who would who who can say that that he didn't? Right? So it's Muslimin who accused Prophet, nobody else. It's not the Kuffar who accused Prophet. Because the booty is to be distributed by the Muslimin for the Muslimin, not for the Kuffar anyways. Mm. Well, uh, I don't know what to say here because I'm not all knowing, you know, I don't know, I don't know a lot about this stuff. You know what I mean? Don't worry, brother. Uh, Nobody is all knowing. We are all learning. But uh, from my perspective, I would say that Allah has a reason he did not, he didn't reveal it to them then once again that's your iman who's saying that now if you put the iman on the side and think logically you will see this is a problem for the side for the sake of uh, um, looking at the things i'm not saying leave because obviously you have pretty high iman so i'm 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 fine but once again do you think this was not the right time for allah to send the unseen information Mm, uh, he knows probably that. yes. Yeah, I mean, probably I yes. Maybe because listen to this. Maybe Allah wanted to test the those people, the Muslims around him, to see. Okay. Uh, oh, a red cloth is missing. A red cloth is missing. We should have had it. Like somebody stole it. Yeah, somebody stole it. It must be the prophet. So maybe he wants to test them to see if he really, if they really believe in him. Right, so but there's no test, buddy. I just showed you. Allah leads astray whomever He wills. Check this out. This will be very interesting for you as well. Okay, okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. Quran chapter number 58 verse number 12 okay and what does it says this is the messenger prophet who came for everyone can you read it uh the sahih okay all you who have disbelieved when you wish wish to privately consult the messenger present before you consolation of a charity that is better for you and pure but if you do not find the means then indeed allah is forgiving and merciful i think they're talking about like giving him um what's the name for that sorry uh um, no 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 let me let me think about it. just give me 20 seconds it's not sadka let's go to no, not sadaka, not sadaka, not sadaka. um something like uh let me just remember the word one second i had it i talked about it the other day um give me 20 seconds please be patient go just say money just for the sake of argument we doesn't have to do anything it's it's financial benefit right just use the word financial benefit for the, we can we use financial benefit no matter what the terminology is let me just think of the word sorry man sorry uh let me go let me go ask my mother about that word i just want to remember it okay you don't have to you don't have to buddy 20 seconds just wait 20 seconds okay Adam, um, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, so I think maybe it's uh associated the word to a hadiyah if you know what a hadiyah is. Hadiyah doesn't matter, I, like I said, it does not matter which terminology you was use, sure. it is some financial stuff, correct? It can be a gift or yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, so Ibn Abbas is actually saying what you said as well that some rich were 
supposed to give because they were rich so you, they were talking more so now which of the profit will actually say that if you want to do private consultation with me private consultation you want to learn from me and you want me to teach you you would have to pay me money or you believe when converse in secret with messenger private consultation i just showed you just read it you wish to converse with him privately offer some voluntarily arms alarms or whatever hadiya whatever word doesn't matter does not matter whatever word you use it is better for you and purer for your sins like seriously a prophet who came to guide us he is saying that if you want to do private consultation with me give me some hadiya fadiya yeah, whatever but voluntary no it says if you do not have it let me let me go back if you do not have it then that is fine for you but if you do not find the means for it if you do not have the money then that's fine for it but if you have the money you have to that's no, what it says uh, offer some voluntary offer some voluntary if you're not if you're not voluntary you can't bother, uh, uh, offer some brother you're not, you brother there you go there you go arabic you have english translation you have arabic if you want me i can open any translation you want to this says if you have then you should if you don't have it then that's fine so voluntarily is only when you don't have it voluntary only when you don't have it so you don't have to kill your one time food to give him money if you don't have the money if so you cannot sacrifice your food to give him money but if you have the money you have to offer an arm before you confess right there's nothing in the verse in arabic or any any of the english translation which says it's voluntary the the voluntary concept comes when you don't have the means for it mm -hmm. but if you like for example if you have money then you have to do that whatever it is it's not mentioned how much but you have to so mm -hmm. so, so now yeah i understand i understand what you're trying to say i understand okay so you seems to understand a lot but uh, that's that's a problem there is a problem muhammad the prophet of all mankind do you see that even in quran the 6300 verses approximately not a single prophet other than muhammad who said that was there is not a single prophet other than muhammad who said that Oh so only Muhammad uh, was asking for these charities. No Allah is Allah is telling us that yeah, give arms to Muhammad. Muhammad. Yeah not no no one else. Mm. Well uh I can I can say this but it's maybe not true maybe because he gave us the Quran or something like that I'm just assuming that but I don't And, see I don't know I don't So know the previous prophets were also given books weren't they? Uh sure but none of them were the Quran. None of them were none of them were as clean and as pure as the Quran. And How today, do you know that? Well, uh I'm pretty sure give me a verse Quran, that the Quran is the only book that has stayed pure. My time. friend, give me a verse in Quran which actually I can't, I can't give you a verse because I'm not a Hafiz. Okay, let me tell you. You read the Quran, go to Hafiz, you will not find a single verse to uh, which will acknowledge your statement that you just made. which one exactly that uh, previous ones were not uh, as clean as this one oh okay okay sure i was just assuming that man again so i can't really say anything for sure so that's these, what i'm these, saying these are interesting um, points here that you're making that they're interesting points i can say that so basically like i said there is not single not a single single verse in quran you can take 10000 years from my account uh, for that So when we talk about the according to Muhammad the previous revelations were also revelations from Allah do you know that uh i'm pretty sure i'm not sure 100% you're not sure 100% so say the biblia it was to the lyle talk sorry i'm asking my friend here in bazin you know biblia say they you know so stuff with Allah sickness with Allah Ne, kod nje mijenja, dosta indijska mislim da je. Samo indijska. Jel' to pravo? 
Ninja of Terra Nesta, tako da sve... Yeah, we're, we're, both sure. we're both not sure. He, he says maybe in Zeal and Teurat, but we're not sure. In Zeal and Teurat only? Uh, we're not sure, man. Uh, he just said, I think so. We're not sure. Okay. So let's talk about in Zeal and Teurat only. How about that? Let's not talk about any other book because you are not sure. Okay. But if you want to learn, I can show you that Allah gave books to everyone. You know, there are 25 prophets written by name whom Allah gave books and plus some of their fathers and their uh, sons. Do you know that? Uh, I did not know that. What? 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 Like uh, smoke, you'll back, be back in a minute. Yeah. Um, I did not know uh, that every prophet had a book or something like that. I never heard of that before, but sure. Excuse me, just give me 10 seconds. Hold on, please. Okay, sorry, brother. Uh, I had to. Uh, somebody called me up. Sorry. Okay, so let's talk about Quran, chapter number six, verse number eighty-two. Would you like to read this? It will be far better if you could read it. And is Saeed uh, back or is he gone? Uh, he'll be back in like in five minutes. He's gonna go smoke. <laughs> oh. Okay. So uh, the Sahih, right? Mm. They who do, who believe and do not mix their belief with injustice. Those will have security and they are lightly, rightly guided. Okay. That is our argument. We gave it unto Abraham against his folk. We raise unto the degrees of wisdom whom we will. Lo, thy Lord is wise aware. Okay. So first Abraham. Okay. Let me read it. It will be a little faster. And then we gave him Isaac, Jacob, and we guided them, Noah. And we guided among the descendants David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron. Thus we rewarded them with good doers. Then it says, and Zechariah and John and Jesus and Elias. Those were the righteous, righteous people. And Ishmael and Elias, Jonah, Lot, we preferred over the world. And some of their fathers and their descendants and their brothers we chose them we guided them to the straight path and it says we gave them the guidance of Allah because he guides his servants whom his servants and then Allah says those are the one those are the ones whom whom we gave the books so basically you have 25 prophets, including your, including some of their fathers and brothers. It says that over here, full context. Among their fathers and their descendants and their brothers of who? You read the names of all the prophets already. Mm -hmm. Allah gave them what? Allah gave them kitab. Do you know the names of these books? Any of these uh, prophets that no, received no. This is the first time we hear of this. I never uh, read this ayah before. Okay. Yeah, because Muslim scholars does not tell that. They do not. They just keep one single statement. Hey, all the previous books are corrupted. All the previous books are corrupted. That's what their statement is. There is not a single verse in Quran which could explicitly state that all the previous scriptures are corrupted. Whereas there are so many verses in Quran which says, Allah gave these words. Let me give you another one for the food of thought. Maybe. Is Saeed back? Uh, Saeed. No, he's not. Yeah, he's not back. Okay, so seems like you, uh, if, if I if, uh, don't uh, mind my statement, it seems like you have not read Quran in your own language or English language yet. Is that um, true? No, no, I haven't. No. I'm planning on soon becoming a Hafiz. I'm beginning to start to learn the Quran, so maybe then I'll read it. And so forget it. being Hafiz. Hafiz means you are reading Arabic, which yes, you don't yes, even yes. know. Right? Yes, yes. So that, that's... I never that read will, the translation, no, no. Yeah, that will not even give you any... Uh, 
any understanding of it and by the way you have heard here if you become a half is your sins will be forgiven or your um, six lineages sins will be forgiven but if Allah does not even wants to guide you and he wants to send you astray and he wants to put you to hell being a half doesn't even make any difference uh, what makes difference is you would know what Quran is saying so that you might be able to implement it or you might be able to leave it hmm. well I have never read the uh, translation of the whole Quran no no so that's why so, a lot of these things for me are new and I never even thought about liberating it so so okay so uh, that's interesting and uh, we have to know that so now we, we see that these are the books that were given to these people so basically when we read the Old Testament Bible we have a lot of prophets whose books are mentioned there already so we already have these books which Muslims has to deny and forget and leave because they the scholars have to say that this is corrupted because the message of gospel and the message of Old Testament contradicts with Quran and hence Quran they have to if they have to proclaim Quran then they cannot proclaim the Bible that's the thing that they have to do scholars mm. let me give you one more verse chapter number 15 verse number 9 it says in the zikra wa inna lahu hafizun indeed it is we who send down the message a zikr a zikr right you know what zikr means zikr yeah no 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 zikr zikr uh, talk zikr. yeah yeah, yeah. like subhanallah alhamdulillah allah akbar yeah. yeah zikr in yeah. nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu hafizun you see in this arabic the word quran is not there right in Sahih International, you will see IE Quran. This is the verse for which they have to say that this is about Quran only. This is not about anything else. This is about Quran. But the verse in Arabic simply says, Indeed, we have sent down the zikr and we are his guardian. Correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Can I show you that the early scriptures? were the zikr of Allah as well. What does zikr mean in Arabic? Uh, zikr means uh, his message. Let's just put it this way. If I'm mm -hmm. talking, it's my message. That's zikr. Yeah, OK. OK. okay. So check this what's out. What's wrong with this? I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand what's wrong with the, with the ayah. Nothing wrong. I'm just saying that your scholars use this ayah and say, this is about Quran. Aha, uh -huh, but he sent down the message. He didn't say the yeah. Quran exactly. Exactly, because there okay. are okay. there are twelve different locations where Allah uses Quran. I will show you as well. Okay, okay. in the okay. Quran al mubin and etc. So there are multiple uh, verses. But let me go to another verse. You will see Allah is saying, "Walakad, walakad, and verily, what is this? Katabna fi zabur mim baad zikr." In al arza Yusya. So verily we have written the scripture after reminder, Zaykar, my righteous slaves will inherit uh, the earth. So basically we see that the book of Psalms and the previous books, Zabur, and the books previous and Baad after Zabur, which is the Injil, is all the zikr of Allah. So if Injil is corrupted or Zabur is corrupted, then this ayah is false. That's Quran logic 101, or you can say dilemma of our scholars, Islamic scholars. <laughs> right? This is the dilemma of Islamic scholars because Allah is saying, Fi Zabur after Psalm, Mimba the Zikr in Jeel. So I can show you Torah is the Zikr, I can show you in Jeel is the Zikr. There are multiple locations where. The zikr of Allah is mentioned. A zikr, a zikr, you can at least read it. So you know Arabic to read it at least. Same word. So if a scholar is saying, the dilemma for the scholar is that he is actually negating what is written in Arabic. Why is he negating? 
because if he actually read the Arabic Quran, uh, if he read the uh, Torah and Injil, and the books of the Prophet that I showed you already, the problem becomes that either Quran is right or all those books are right. Quran is standing all alone versus all the rest of the Prophet's books are in Bible. Now the question is, why do you still believe in Quran? Um, here's the thing, man. If I knew all this, you know what I mean? If I knew how to answer this for you, and if I knew all those books, I don't even know all those books by heart. I don't know any, I didn't really research that at all. And for me to give you a concrete answer now, I cannot for that. And why I believe in the in the Quran? Simply because um, it's hard to explain, you know. It's a, because know someone said it to you. Because someone told you that this is the book, this is the Mubin book, it has never been corrupted. It has never been changed. It is as is. It was sent to Muhammad by Jibrail. And that is why you believe in this. Nothing else. You have never even read Quran. You don't even know how many contradictions in Quran that are present. I can go on certain ones as well. Does not make any difference for me. It's already one hour that we are talking. I can talk with you for another hour or more. The problem is you are following somebody else's statement without validating and verifying that that's the problem buddy so you're trying to say that i'm following somebody else without thinking of, with my own head or something like with, that. no no i'm saying without validating it please I'll oh, without validating it oh okay, okay validating okay. it i didn't hear you, them Sorry. okay i understand now you have well, not validated those claims you are following the claims mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I did not. I didn't do any research, of course. I mean, not a lot of it. I didn't look into the Quran for its faults, if it has any, for example. But uh, I did not do that. No, but sure, I did think research about the Quran and uh, look around its miracles and stuff like that. But I never thought about these things. I never looked at, looked at this. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is all unfamiliar to me, and um. Uh, it is kind of sad for me that I cannot give you any answers to this because it is really unfamiliar for me and it's the first time I see these things, you know, because I never read the Quran's translation. So I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know what you're hoping for, but I really cannot tell you anything. I can't. It's not about you. me hoping for anything, buddy. Um, uh, yeah. What is Said saying? Uh, he just said. Uh, I just say yeah, he me it's, not, it's not related to this. Don't worry about it. He just okay. me Do you know what this is on the screen? Uh, no. This is called blue blue Quran. The blue Quran. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, this is one of the early manuscripts of Quran. Okay. okay. Uh, there are. Uh, this one is written in. Uh, uh, late 9th century. Okay. Okay. This one is written in late 9th century. Okay. Do you see there are no dots on it? Uh, what do you mean by dots? Like uh, Fetha, Kesra and stuff like that? That's dashes. I'm talking about the dots which makes a ba as ba or ta or sa or jeen uh -huh. or ya or etc. Yeah, yeah. That's not lit, like, uh, so people can easily read Quran. Mm hmm are we talking about easy reading or are we talking about some other issue? I wasn't, Sorry. I wasn't here, so I don't know what I'm talking no, about. No, no, I just started when you were here. Yeah, we just so, started. So we're talking about this blue Quran that does not have any dots for the T, B, and N. Stuff like yeah, that. yeah. So what are you trying to say about this? What are you trying to... Okay. So this is written in 9th century. Uh, Muslims do not have a Quran, full Quran. Not a single Muslim has a full Quran for at least 300 years after the death of Muhammad. You know that, right? Uh, no, I did not know that. Okay. None of the Muslim has any full Quran for over 300 years after the death of Muhammad. None of them. Okay. We have certain pages, some pages from here, some pages from there, some pages from there. And that's it. Okay. This is the late 9th century Quran, which is some parts. It is one of the bigger manuscripts. That's why I showed you. Otherwise, if I look at uh, 
Samarkand manuscript. It's even much smaller. I'm talking about Blue Quran, which has which has the largest one, which has more pages that they have versus any other page. Now the problem is, let me show you uh, my paintbrush, and I will explain it to you why I actually showed this. So. I'll give you a basic example to begin with, and then I'll give you a more interesting example. Okay. What does that? Can you read uh, it? L M M N R probably or L M H R. Not sure. Why? That's Arabic. That's Arabic, buddy. Come on, where is L? <laughs> just oh, try to just man. try to I'm just try to still, read uh, it. I'm still repeating my sufara. I'm not really good with it. Because I haven't been a Muslim in a long time. Okay. So I, with certainty, I cannot read this. Maybe it's, I think the first one is an Aleph. The second one is either a meme or a Ha. No, it's not a Ha. It's probably meme. The third okay. one from the right side, probably meme. And the last one is an R. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let yes, me say, no, now let's now read it. No, fair. Noon, ein, fe, re, no fair. Right? Now I just place some dots. Okay. Right? Okay. And if I do this, what does that mean? Say, what does this mean? Yo, yeah, fair. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Fair, because I haven't created any diacritical marking. Yeah. So I can write read it as yeah, fair, yeah, fair, no fair, whatever. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This word does not has any major issue if you put the dot on the top or put two dots on the bottom. But you see the major dilemma where you put the dot, the word become different. Because yohfer means yohfer, uh, uh, yohfer means he singular gives mercy. No fair means v as in ruler. Okay. Now this one does not have a huge issue, but this is the difference between the hafs version of Quran, hafs musafe hafs. And Musafe verse. Which Musaf of Quran do you read, by the way? Uh, you are not from Morocco, so you will probably be reading Hafs. So in your Hafs version, it would be written as Nohfer. This word is in Ayah chapter number two, verse number uh, fifty-eight. Right, and but, in uh, Ayah fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. But if you read the verse version of Quran. Imam verse written version of Quran. This will be in chapter number two, where ayah number 57, because ayahs are different as well in the Hafs and verse version as well. Bakara ayah 58. Yes. Uh, I can't see that right here. But sure, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take your word for it. No, no, don't take my word. I will show you. Don't worry. What like. Whenever I do these things, I show to 58. Okay. Hold on. Let me take a snapshot and put it here. That's why we are here on this stream because I want to show you everything. This is the word, buddy. Okay. Uh -huh. It's with noon, ein, fe, re. No, fair. Okay. But if you read in ayah chapter number two, verse number 57 of the verse version, which you can actually read online as well, it is called QuranFlash.com. They have all the eight Musafs of Quran, where the ayah numbers are even different, or you can buy verse version of Quran from Amazon as well. Morocco from uh, predominantly use verse version of Quran. There are over 5,000 diacritical marking differences. The dot differences over 5,000 
and some of them even have the words different their ayas are different their ayah numbering are different and everything are different so you might have heard i have done a live stream uh, a few uh, weeks ago where i showed that your a lot of things goes down the drain when you talk about these things then we look into now we look into diacritical marking when we look into diacritical marking uh Said would probably know better. Said, what does that mean? Said, like, what does that mean? Like killing or something like that. So, Katal is killing? Yeah. Okay. If I make a pesh over here, that means killing. If I make a dash over here, instead of pish a dash that means fight do you know the difference now do you know the difference okay let me tell you how many times in quran the word katl has been used do you know that it has been used over 50 times over 50 times can you tell me how many times it is supposed to be katl rather than kutl? Because kutl means kill and katl means fight. The diacritical marking were added 350 years after the death of Muhammad, rather 400 years after the death of Muhammad, approximately, give or take. What should I do with that? And this is the perfect preservation of Quran. Let me give you Huff's and verse version difference. This is, they, they forgot another dot over here, missing print, misprint dot. Let me just add another dot. Kutal, the difference is the pish, the pish here, which means kill, the zabar, which means fought. This is Quran chapter number three, verse number 146. Quran chapter number three, verse number 146. Hafs versus verse version. Now, when you are adding the diacritical marking, 350 years to 400 years after the death of Muhammad, how many verses were supposed to be kill the unbeliever, kill the disbeliever, kill the XYZ versus fight? You don't know. And Muslims comes to me and say, hey, we have Quran which is perfectly preserved from the time of Muhammad. I can show you many, many ahadiths. I can start opening you ahadiths where people are saying, Verses are missing, uh, paragraphs are missing, surahs are missing. You can't run away from the subject. That, uh, and that is why Yasser Qadi came up and said there are holes in the narrative of the preservation of Quran. Uh, the other guy, Mufti Abu Leh, said there are no matawatirs which, we, which are written to prove that Quran is perfectly preserved. Um, there is there's nothing that can prove that. So I don't know how more to answer your last uh, statement that why do you still believe it quite frankly um, hmm. this is interesting for me but uh i'm not i'm i didn't know any of this and i don't know a lot for me to answer any questions for you and i would love you know what i would love to do i would love for us to continue when my brother is here Okay, I was told that you are the brother, or Saeed is no, the brother, no, no, or no, someone no, is the brother. No, 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 my brother isn't available tonight. <laughs> okay, so I, I was told that Saeed doesn't know, and you know, or something like that. No, we're, we're both, um, I'm no scholar, of course. I didn't research any. Nobody is. But my brother, uh, as I mentioned, he researched both your religion and our religion, and he came to a conclusion that ours is better. So, um, I did not do Check that. This out. And I would love you don't to have to. Continue you... as soon... I'm sorry, can I finish? Uh, I would love for us to continue because I want to hear him as well and what he thinks. And okay. I want to. I, I want somebody to t talk to you who knows more than me because I can't answer any of this. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm just... Check this out. Okay, I'm listening. This is your scholar. Mass transmitted hadith right. falls under consensus of the scholars that this hadith is mass transmitted. Then, listen, those hadiths are beyond, beyond questionable. 
Like the Qiraat of the Quran. The Qiraat of the no. Quran, which are Mutawatira, are ten Qiraat. Do you believe, do you believe in the Mutawatira? He said ten Qiraat. Okay, ten Qiraat. Read again. This guy is proclaiming, and this guy is saying Qiraat. This is Mufti Abu Leh over here. He's proclaiming Qiraat are not even Mutawatir. So check this out. Anyone is unable to understand the technical yeah. aspect. He's the the I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being the Quran was never established, established in the same way Hadith was established. So Qiraz were never established. There is no chain of narration for Qiraz. There is nothing for Qiraz. And once again, he, the other guy is saying 10 Qiraz. But once again, in the Ahadith, there's no mention of 10 Qiraz, FYI. Qiraat from men? Right, but the Quran was never established. The Qiraat were from men, transmitted by men. Transmitted by men. Exactly. But it was never documented in the... It was never documented. It was never used the same but you method. Ten as yes or no? This is a why, technical why, term. Why, 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 what is the point of this question? Because then it shows your, your Look, method. Okay. This Look, is totally because flawed. people probably don't totally understand flawed. this. Right? Let Basically, me Mufti okay. has a flawed methodology in understanding Islam. This okay, is why wow. Mufti has a flawed understanding and this Imam has a better understanding. FYI. Well, that kind this of is really why that is escalated. This is where, why is he went from uh, this, is, um, this is what uh, of course <laughs> this is Okay. So yes, they are fighting about the same very subject. So I will download this video and uh, this discussion, not the video, our discussion. And I will give it to you as an unlisted YouTube video. Only the person who has the link can watch it, not public. Okay. okay. So you can show it to your brother, ask him all the questions, get the answers, and then come back. All right, brother. All right, Mr. Said, do you want to say something? No. By the way, your goat, goat face is. By the way, do you know Quran was eaten by God as well? FYI. Quran was what? Yeah, there are certain verses of Quran which was eaten by God. Mm. And they were pretty disturbing verses. The verses of uh, beating, uh, stoning to death, and the verses of breastfeeding were eaten by goat. And your face is exactly, your face, I mean, on the picture is of a goat so there must be this kind of a goat who ate those Quranic verses and that's why they are not preserved okay there we go do you know the story of uh, breastfeeding adults the story of breastfeeding what adults the verses of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed and the paper was with me under my pillow Aisha is saying that when the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came and ate it. These verses were abrogated in recitation, but not in ruling. Other ahadiths establish the number of first stage to be five, means the breastfeeding to be five instead of time times. So first it was revealed as ten times, then it was abrogated to five times. So there is there is a fatwa by al Azhar University in Egypt as well uh, that if you're if you are not a mahram and you're entering the house the woman has to give five breastfeeding uh, to that person adult to make it mahram uh, there are some scholars which says that now we have cups so we can instead of suckling you can extract the milk from your bosoms and uh, give it in a cup you don't have to suck the breast. There is an Imam who talks about no, it is necessary because it has to be suckling because that's what uh, the Arabic word says. By the way, there are so many ahadiths. I have multiple live stream on this where I have shown all of these, the fatwas, the ahadiths. There are multiple ahadiths. Aisha, the Ummahatul Mumini, used to send uh, anyone who wants to come and meet her to her sister 
uh, Umme Kalthum uh, for breastfeeding before uh, he could enter into the house of Aisha. So Salim was a person who uh, who could not uh, get all the five breastfeeding. He only had three, so Salim was not able to enter into the house of Aisha at all. Let me show you one hadith on that so that you would know that I'm not lying because this is a huge accusation because we are talking about Aisha and her sister. So this is suckling with Watul Malik. Yaya related from me, Malik, and etc. etc. Umar informed me that Aisha, Ummul Mominin, mother of the believer, sent him away while he was being nursed to his sister Umm Kaltum bin Abi Bakr, suckle him ten times so that he can come and see me. Salim said Umm Kaltum nursed me three times because then Umm Kaltum got sick and she fell ill so that she only nursed me three times. I could not go and see Aisha because Umm Kaltum didn't finish me ten times. Aisha was such a baby she couldn't get the suckling done. So she used to send uh, anyone to her sister Umm Kalsum who binti Abi Bakr because if the sister will nurse it is the same as uh, as uh, uh, as uh, as her circling because he will become a maharam because he will be Razai brother a, a longer hadith is here where Aisha is talking Sulte bin Sohail and it says, uh, the messenger said, grant him peace, give him five drinks of your milk and he will be mahram to this guy, Salim, of another guy. She saw this as a forester. Aisha Umm Hatul Mominin took that as a precedence for whatever man she wanted to be able to come see her. She ordered her sister Umm Kaltum bin Abu Bakr and the daughter of her brother to give milk to whichever man she wanted to be able to come and see her. The rest of the wives of the Prophet said no no this is just for uh um, um, um salim this guy um sohail bin sohail bin uh, sohail bin uh, saleh bin sohail not for anyone but aisha used to do that awfully that's not even a problem and um, in my videos you can see live stream on that where uh, i have shown the fatwas and this is um, if you speak arabic i can give you an arabic uh, video where people are uh, talking about this and etc etc so this is what it is buddy all right all right thank you uh thank you for your time man uh be sure to send me that link i'll see with my brother to uh take a look at this video and as soon as we're able i'll dm you on the same place that you send me the link all right i will do that sound good yep sounds like a plan all right thanks for this debate tonight it was kind of it wasn't a debate buddy I, I this is not a debate buddy we weren't even debating we were having a nice discussion i don't debates i didn't i do discussions okay right okay. it's a discussion okay. right we weren't debating come on man <laughs> why no, would you no, call no, it a debate? you were showing me some points i was giving the best answers that i could with my knowledge i would consider that more between a debate and a conversation i can say okay sounds good you take care have a nice night all right, Adam, take care. Yeah, see you guys. Saeed, good night, man. Yeah, good night, guys. All right, take care.